Hey there students and welcome to the second part of my lecture on Castillone's The Book of the Courtier. Now in the first part I addressed really the main thrust of this work on civic humanism from the Renaissance which was really about how to be a courtly gentleman, a Renaissance man, the man that all men aspire to be, the man who is politically successful in the courts of princes, okay? So somebody who is a trusted sidekick, really, how to be a good sidekick. Now, as far as that goes, a lot of people don't realize that Castillone also devoted a bit of attention to how to be a courtly lady. So when we think about how to be a lady or a gentleman in this Renaissance classical and even to some extent modern tradition, and so in the third book he devotes some attention to what he'd like to see in a lady. Now, of course, the point of view here is a male of the Renaissance, and we have to keep that in mind. And, of course, people have all kinds of different ideas of gender in the 21st century. Is this something that's socially constructed, or is this something that are there ladylike characteristics that are universal? And, of course, that would be the assumption of people like Castillone, who were writing during the Renaissance. And let me give a quick shout-out to Clinton A. P. Euro. Y'all got such a great group chat, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And so, shout out to y'all. Much deserved. And so, as far as that goes, the Lady Duchess, who's been listening here, she asks, Magnifico, like, tell me, how would you describe the court lady? And so, he, she wants to know, how would you describe the court lady? And so, he says here that, you know what, I didn't really plan to talk about this, but you've won me over. Since you want to hear it, I will speak of this excellent lady as I would have her. So I will I will speak of the ideal woman. And so first of all, he separates what are the qualities that men and women should both have, and then what are the qualities that are unique to men and unique to women. So as far as that goes, he says that there are some qualities for both, but there are other qualities that are more suitable for a woman than they are for a man, and some more suitable for a man than for a woman. And so while a man should show, as he says, stout and sturdy manliness, that a woman should have a soft and dainty tenderness and an air of womanly sweetness in her every movement. And so as far as that goes, moving into the qualities of men and women, avoiding affectation. I mentioned in the other lecture the importance of being real, the importance of being seen as sincere, and that's something that is very, very important for a woman as well, he says, to be seen as sincere, to be mannerly, clever, prudent, not arrogant, not envious, not slanderous, not vain, not quarrelsome, not silly, to know how to win and keep the favor of her mistress and of all others. So as far as that goes, that those are things that are, no matter what, uh, whether you're a man or woman, you should have those things. But then he starts talking about what does a woman need? And as far as that goes, he actually gets into a little bit of an, what seems to be an acknowledgement of gender privilege. He says here that beauty is more necessary to her than to the courtier. Now, of course, that's something that is backed by science these days as far as men see physical attractiveness as being more important than in a woman than women see that in a man. So he says here that a woman who lacks beauty lacks much and also says that a woman has to be very, very careful about what she says and the impressions that she gives because he says that a woman has not so many ways of defending herself against false imputations as has a man. And of course, that's the way he's looking at this in his uh, more traditional society, that a woman has to be even more conscientious about her reputation. So according to Castillone, a woman should be pleasantly affable and she should be able to converse with a man of any station, okay, as far as, and think about this when we're thinking about civic humanism applying to the politician, what about the politician's wife? So that she can talk to anyone, whether white-collar, blue-collar, aristocratic, 
or from a more humble background that she's able to um, project friendliness and also to project chastity that is something very important of course when we're studying medieval history and renaissance history that the ideal woman is someone who is both beautiful and chaste now let's be careful here because again just like with the courtly gentleman it is important to have some kind of moderation here that a woman should project chastity but not be seen as overly prudish first of all because that is seen as fake and second of all because it can be rather boring so as far as that uh, as that goes that a woman needs to know where the line is and go right up to it and not pass it as far as what he says here she must preserve a certain mean now he gives a scenario here that I think is very informative as far as that goes that what if a woman the courtly lady finds herself among some courtly gentlemen who then start going on a conversational track that is not extraordinarily gentlemanly, so to speak, if I may put that lightly. Now, there are a few ways that she could respond to that. Now, one way she could respond is she could excuse herself and almost like, oh my goodness, I can't believe that they're talking about this around me because I'm just such a chaste lady. And, oh my goodness, I just can't even hear this stuff. And so this, he says, seems overly prudish. And somebody thinks, what is she hiding? Now, on the other hand, there's the other extreme that she could then start conversing freely, okay? Like, kind of like one of the boys, isn't there? I think there's a Katy Perry album about that or something like that. Uh, that that's not really what uh, a lady aspires to be. And he says that if the, if the lady is one of the boys, then she's not going to be as respected, okay? So don't be too prudish, but then again, don't get into this, you know, unladylike behavior. Instead, he says that a woman should listen, smile, maybe blush a little bit, but, you know, that she should smile. She should not be seen as judgmental, but also should not be seen as someone who is just, uh, you know, is, is being right in there with the men. Now, of course, in the 21st century, some people may have a problem with these things and some not. But as far as that, uh, this Renaissance woman is in a lot of cases seen as something of an ornament, which I think is something we need to remember that women were not they didn't have access to humanistic education or anything like that. So there were a lot of a lot of things here where women faced a lot of discrimination. But I think there is also, when we think about what is considered generally attractive or ladylike behavior in our society today, I think that there certainly are some bits of this that could carry over even to today. And especially when he talks about avoiding gossip, okay, that a woman should not always be gossiping about people because remember that this projects envy this doesn't show somebody as virtuous and what he warns about is that a man will listen to gossip okay if there's a woman who's gossiping all the time a man will typically listen and because he's getting information and it's kind of scandalous and it might be kind of entertaining but the man is not going to respect this woman who is always gossiping about other people. And I think that today, whether somebody's a man or a woman, that taking this advice and not always gossiping about other people, not sending out negative energy, being someone who projects positive energy, that this is something that is good. And so as far as what he wants here, he wants a beautiful woman and a woman who is virtuous and he says here thus we see that a word or laugh or act of kindness however small it be from a virtuous woman is more prized by everyone than all the endearments and caresses of those who show their lack of shame so openly and so that is what Castillone has to say about the ideal woman, the Renaissance woman, the woman that projects classical beauty and virtue. What do you think? 
do you think that this still applies to us today as far as gender roles and relationships and that sort of thing? Let me know in the comments. So do you find him credible? Do you find maybe some of it to be worthwhile and some of it to be rubbish? Let me know. Get a discussion going. I think it would be great. And remember, if you're not already subscribed to my channel, there's all kinds of other good stuff where this came from. So subscribe and connect with me on social media. Thank you for watching, and it's always a pleasure.